What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's video I'll be sharing a quick tip with you for how you can go about rotating shapes around a circular path in Adobe Illustrator. Alright guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you a cool little trick that I learned recently and that is how to rotate shapes around um, a circular object. So I'm just going to create a document here in Adobe Illustrator. It doesn't really matter what size. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is press L to get my ellipse tool and then hold down the shift key and drag outwards to get that nice constrained circle like we have here. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is press M to then switch over to the rectangle tool. And I'm going to do the same thing. Hold down shift and drag outwards. And keep in mind if you don't hold down shift you're just going to get you know whatever shape you get. But if by holding down shift, it will constrain the proportions of the shape. So what you want to do then is click and drag around the shape and hold down the shift key while hovering your mouse over any of the four corners and then just rotate it so that it'll rotate uh, by increments of 45 degrees. All right, what we're going to do from here is press the A key to switch over to our direct selection tool and then select this top point here, this top anchor point, and just hold down the shift key and tap upwards a few times drag around the right side and hold down shift and then tap it in and do the same thing from the left side here. Next we're going to select our circular shape and then hold down the alt option and shift keys and kind of drag it over so that things line up and you'll see here I have this uh, green line that was kind of indicating that these shapes are aligned and those are just my smart guides. If you don't have those turned on in Illustrator um, you can just get them by coming to the view menu and choosing smart guides or by pr pressing uh, Command U on the keyboard, or Control U if you're on a PC. All right, so from here, we're just gonna move this circle up a little bit while holding down the Shift key to make sure that things stay aligned. And if you wanna double check to make sure that it's aligned, you can always click and drag around both shapes and then come up here and choose the Horizontal Align Center option. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is make sure that our circle is on top of this other shape. So in order to do that, you can either come up to the object menu and choose Arrange, Bring to Front, or the shortcut, which is just Command, Shift, and the right bracket on the keyboard. All right, from there, select both of these, and now we need to use our Pathfinder. And the Pathfinder just kind of looks like these two overlapping squares here, which, again, if you don't have those, you can easily access them via the Window menu, just coming to the bottom here and choosing Pathfinder. And once you open that panel, you'll see that you have about you know eight to ten options here. Um, but the one that we want to use right now is this second one in the, in the column here. And that is just called uh, minus, I believe it's minus front or subtract from front. Yeah, minus front. And all that's going to do is basically knock this top shape out of this other shape. So it'll kind of intersect the two. All right, but now we want to rotate it around this circle. So I'm going to hold down sh Alt and Shift and drag it over here once again so that our shapes line up and you can kind of see what that did it kind of made this perfect cutout around our circle okay so from here I want to modify this point a little bit I'm just gonna press A to get my direct selection tool again click and drag around both of the shapes and then press R to get the rotate tool now you'll notice when I did that oh sorry I should tell you that if you come over here you can also find it here on the toolbar um, but anyway you'll see here that it created this kind of like blue target and that is called your anchor point point. and basically as I rotate this you can see that it's rotating around that anchor point um, but the problem is that we want to rotate based on this center point here of the circle not the entire shape or these two shapes together so I'm just gonna move the anchor point into the center of the circle here and again it'll tell you you're in the center if you have your smart guides turned on. And then I'm just going to hold down the Alt Option key and click twice. It's a little bit tricky. Sometimes it'll start to rotate before it brings up the menu. So you just got to try and hold the mouse pretty still uh, as you do that. So again, click in the center. There we go. And we're going to change this to 45 degrees. You can leave Preview checked off and then hit Copy. And you'll see that you have now created a copy of that shape uh, rotating by 45 degrees. So in order to repeat this now, all we have to do is press Command D on the keyboard and you'll get several more copies until it rotates all the way around the shape. Now as we do this, 
um, we're also creating copies of this circle in the center, which we don't want. So I'm just going to grab this shape here and press Command-2 to lock it, or Control-2 if you're on a PC. And that way I can just drag in here towards my circle and delete them. So you should just be left with your outer shapes now, these, these rays here. Okay, um, before we move on, I just want to come up to the object menu, make sure you unlock all so that you can grab this shape again, or press Command Option 2 on the keyboard. Once you've done that, you can click and drag around all of them and press Command G to group your shapes. So now you can move them around and everything is kind of nice and locked up together. All right, so let's say we just want to create one more shape to kind of fill in these other gaps here, but we want to use the same approach that we used for this first uh, set of shapes. We're going to do the same thing, just grab the rectangle tool by pressing M on the keyboard and then hold down shift and rotate it so that it's you know pointing upwards at 45 degrees. And use the direct selection tool, which is A, to just modify these points a little bit. All right, all I'm doing is kind of moving them in and making a shorter version of what we already have. All right, again, I'm going to hold down Alt Option and Shift to make a copy of my circle. Or you can just hold down Alt Option, actually. Shift just kind of makes it move directly to the side or directly up and down, um, which isn't really necessary. So you can just make a copy of this by holding Alt Option and dragging it. OK, so uh, same deal. We're going to move this over here, make sure that it's aligned. And we want to make sure that the circle is on top. So again, the way that you can do that is to come up to the object menu and choose Arrange, Bring to Front, or by pressing Command, Shift, and the right bracket key on the keyboard. Then I'm going to select both shapes, come over to my Pathfinder, and choose Minus Front. And now we will have uh, that shape knocked out. And I'm going to move this over to my circle here and make sure that they're aligned. And then press R on the keyboard, and I'm going to move my anchor point into the center, right there. And then I'm going to try and carefully uh, click while holding down the Alt key on that anchor point in the center. Now this time, because we already have 45 degrees, we want to basically go and fill in the space between that. So I'm going to do a number, let's say half of that. So let's say 22.5 degrees, and press Copy. And now we're just going to press Command D to continue these shapes all the way around. Okay, but again, we don't need all of these um, circular shapes in the middle. We just want to keep one of them, really. So I'm going to uh, delete the others so that we can just keep one copy in the middle to work with. You know, there's no reason why we need to have uh, all these copies of the circle. We basically just need it like that. OK, so I want to group these other shapes together like we did with these over here. So I'm going to select my circle and press Command-2 to lock it, or come up to the Object menu, and you can choose Lock here, Lock Selection. <clears throat> and then I'm going to click and drag around all of these shapes and press Command-G to group them. All right, now I'm going to unlock everything by pressing Command-Shift, or sorry, Command-Option-2 on the keyboard. And now I can select all three of my shapes, come back to the Align Tools and choose Horizontal, horizontal Align Center, and vertical align center like that. And then I'm just going to <clears throat> take a look at what we have here. So this is looking pretty good. I'm just noticing that there's a little bit of space uh, between these two shapes. We want them to be on the same uh, kind of path here. So we basically just need to hold down the shift key and the option key together and then drag in slightly from any of the four corners like that. All right, and now there should be an even amount of space between all of our bursts and the circle in the center. Now you'll see when I have this shape selected that it's showing that there's a couple of shapes that are kind of overlapping with our longer shapes. So we want to get rid of those points. Uh, so the way to do that is I'm first going to select my longer shapes and press Command 2 to lock them. And then I will use my uh, direct selection tool, A on the keyboard, and just kind of drag around where I think these shapes are. All right and then I'm just going to delete them. All right, again, it's just about removing uh, extraneous points that we don't really need or things that are going to be hidden. Uh, you know, if you're not going to see them there, you just want to try to keep things as simple and as clean as possible in Illustrator. So go ahead and unlock that so that you can, once again, uh, select all your shapes and then press Command-G to group them all together. 
And now you'll see we've got this cool uh, sunburst shape here that we can use in any of our designs. Um, and it was pretty easy. You know, it's, it's certainly a lot easier than, uh, you know, kind of manually pasting each of these shapes all the way around. And um, it's, a, it's a handy little function. You know, you can use this for logo designs or for creating patterns and brushes and things like that in Adobe Illustrator. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If so, please give us a thumbs up, like our videos, and uh, leave us a comment and let us know what other kinds of tutorials you guys would like to see. And uh, go ahead and sign up for our email list, guys, and check out the Design Better Contest. It gives you the opportunity to win a design Q&A. And also tell me what projects you're working on or what you may feel stuck with. I'll be picking three to five people each month, and then I will ask you to send me, uh, you know, whatever project you're working on that you need some help with, and I will do a video to give you personalized tips and techniques to help you design better right now.